Welcome back to Master Data Management 1. In the previous video, you synchronized your Atomsphere and MDM platforms for the MySQL source and ran your first test. It is now time to move on to the fourth and final step in the MDM lifecycle, which is the stewardship step. Now that we've run our first test, we've essentially inserted that data from our MySQL database into our MDM platform, into our contact repository. That is considered our initial load. And with that complete, we are officially through the first steps in our development lifecycle. And now we can start looking at a few items that are related to the fourth and final feature of MDM, which is going to be the steward process or otherwise known as stewardship. In the fourth step, our objective is to steward our data as it flows into MDM. More specifically, it will resolve duplicates, fix data entry issues, as well as identify and correct erroneous data. The business goal of the steward phase is to streamline data visibility and user required cleanup actions. This includes anything that cannot be handled automatically through your match rules that we set up earlier in this class. The steward step will involve human interaction to be the last line of defense to decide whether golden records are created and updated or conversely that the source systems set to receive channel updates have their information updated as well. In order to understand what the data steward does, it's important to understand the structure of the MDM workflow. As an example, let's just say that the app one figure here on the screen represents our MySQL source. We will start by pulling a record into our Atomsphere process and push it into our MDM platform. Once the MySQL records reach the MDM platform through our branded MDM connector, it is going to take the records and pass them through a series of steps. The first step is going to be the validation step. This is where our match rules and any data quality steps we've configured are going to occur. The system starts by checking for data quality steps. If the documents pass all of the validation steps that you've created here, it will move into the next stage. Once the documents have been prepared through the data quality steps, it will move into the match rules step, where the data must pass the specified rules to determine whether the documents will be treated as updates to existing golden records, or if they will be treated as new golden records. Assuming your documents pass all data quality steps and match rules, they will be then sent through the approval process and in most cases result in the creation or updates to your golden records. If you've set up your MDM solution correctly, the majority of these approvals can be done without any human intervention. Now, not all of your documents will result in approvals, and this is where the steward steps in. If at any point during the MDM workflow, the document is rejected via the validation tools like a business rules shape, or cannot be validated through the match rules for some reason, it will then be rejected and end up with the quarantine area. This area is where the data steward will be able to diagnose issues with rejected documents. These documents can be handled in one of two ways. If the data steward is able to resolve the problem manually, they can approve the record and push it into the repository. However, if the document has an error that cannot be resolved in the quarantine area, the steward may reject the document so that they can fix the issue. The document would then go through the validation process during the next process execution. This is a very simplified version of the MDM workflow. So let's take a look at a more accurate depiction. This image is a more detailed version of the workflow that we just discussed in the previous slide. You can review the logic that affects your data at each step of the way. I highly recommend studying the slide and keeping it handy while you build your first MDM solution. The granular level of the information shown here will help you build your process and insert data quality steps properly. This image is also located in the MDM reference guide, so you can find it there as well. The data steward will most often find themselves working within two specific tabs. The first tab is the reporting tab. This tab is where you can go to keep track of all data coming into and going out of MDM. It's actually modeled after the Atomsphere process reporting tab, so it should look pretty familiar to you. From here, we can see the time each execution happened, which repository the data came from or went to, what model was used, and which source it came from as well. You also have the ability to look at individual data sets for a more granular verification of data. And just like in process reporting, this reporting tab allows you to set filters as well. We're going to explore the features of this in a little bit more detail during our next exercise. 
The second tab that the data steward will primarily use is the stewardship tab. The stewardship tab is split up into three main sections, noted by the three named subtabs. We have data, which is where you can go to see the existing golden records in your repository. Next is quarantine, which holds any record that gets rejected. This area gives the steward several options to use in order to resolve any potential issues. And finally, we have the staging subtab, which can be used to view your staged records. Now we haven't discussed what staging is yet, so now would be a good time to introduce it to you. Staging is another feature available in the MDM platform that helps protect your golden records. As you build out your MDM solution, you will most likely need to add data from more than one source. When you add a new source, you will most likely need to do a large import of data in order to add to your existing golden records. If you set up a staging area, you can view the effects that the new data has on your current golden records to verify that the changes being made are as you expected. If you find an error within the import or decide that you don't like how the new data affects your current golden records, you can simply reject the import and no changes will be made to your real golden records. It essentially allows you to view the changes to your data and then gives you the option to accept or reject the changes it makes. This is just another way that the MDM tool gives you total control over your data. We're actually going to do something a little different for these exercises here. We will actually not be making any changes to our processes or MDM solution, but instead just exploring the options that we have within the reporting and stewardship tabs. You can follow along in the activity guide or you can just explore the platform along with me. These exercises are simply to inform you of the options available through these two tabs. I'm going to start by hopping back over into our Atomsphere platform, where we actually left off here in our test mode area. So what you can do is you can simply uh, go back to your process canvas here, and then we're going to switch over into the MDM platform. So we're going to go ahead and click on that tab in order to get back over to our MDM platform. And then we need to go ahead and click on the reporting tab here at the top of the screen. By hovering over the reporting tab, you see that you have three different options, inbound, outbound, and historical. We're going to go ahead and click on the inbound activity option. The first thing that I'd like to show is that um, under where it says inbound activity, there's a couple of filtered areas here. What you can do is click on the drop down that says past hour. And this is just like our Atomsphere uh, reporting page. We have uh, four different designations. We have the past hour, past 24 hours, past week, and then you can even put in a date range if you'd like. So in order to um, access those, you'd simply click on the node, click apply, and then it would apply that setting so you can um, filter through the different executions that happen. Next, we can click on the add filter button to open another drop down menu with a bunch of pre-configured filters based off of many column headers, uh, which actually just makes it easier for you to locate specific execution types. Uh, so we can add filters based off of specific repositories, models, and sources, and things like that. And finally, the last two buttons, we have a save button, so you can save the current filters uh, as the default view, so that uh, every time that you enter in here, it'll have those same filters set up. And then finally, the refresh button. If you click on that, it will re it'll refresh all of the different timestamps on here, um, so that any new executions that come through will, will pop in at the top. And if you look over here on the right hand side, you can also filter based off of all of the executions, um, only the errored executions or only the successful executions. Uh, in our case, we only have one and or I only have one. Um, some of you may have a couple more if your process didn't run uh, quite right. But most of you should have uh, just a single execution there and it should be a success. You can also click on the hyperlink timestamp under the report time header. And this is actually going to pull in a new window from the right side of your screen. This new window actually isolates the specific execution and provides important information about the execution itself, as well as gives you several actions you can take. You can actually click on the actions button noted here by the blue cog icon. And it gives you three different options. You can click on batch processing details, resubmit batch, or view the Atomsphere execution. The batch processing details is going to provide you with statistics about the execution batch, such as the time it took to get through the parsing, enrichment, and incorporation phases. This will only resubmit the documents that were sent via the original execution. So any new documents that came into the queue since then will actually not be pulled through for that given source. 
And then finally, you can view the Atomsphere execution, which will open up the process reporting tab within the Atomsphere platform. From there, you can view specific information about the Atomsphere process, which you learned about in Boomi Essentials. You can also click on the hyperlink timestamp under the created at column to open up another window. Now from this page, we actually have the old actions button from the previous page as well. So you can still do the batch processing details, resubmit the batch or view the Atomsphere execution. However, we now get to see all of this, the individual records that came from our MySQL source. So from here, you actually have a whole new set of actions based off of that information. If we take a look at the actions available to us, the first one is the entity processing details. This option provides the source entity ID and the entity resolution details for each record. Next is the view entity option, which shows the records fields and their associated values. You can also view the original XML format of the incoming data from this menu as well. The next option we have is view the golden record. And this shows all of the fields associated with the model and the data included in the selected golden record. You may also see the source data, associated tags, and the history for each record. And lastly, we have the view transaction details. And this option provides specific information about the transaction, such as when the golden record was created and the associated entity ID. As you can see, the stewards reporting tab is pretty much the same as our process reporting within the Atomsphere platform. So it gives you very similar options to use to look over those executions and see what's going on with your data uh, throughout each execution as well. So you can go ahead and click on the left side of the screen to return back to our reporting tab. And that takes care of exercise number 15. So the next thing we're going to do is explore the actual stewardship tab itself. So what you can do is go ahead and click on the stewardship tab located to the right of the reporting tab. Now the stewardship tab is split into three distinct areas. We have our data tab, or I should call this more of a sub tab. We have our quarantine sub tab and we have our staging sub tab. The data sub tab is actually where all of the golden records can be viewed. So what we can see on my screen here is from our MySQL database, we actually pulled a bunch of uh, contact data for a bunch of our um, different contacts that we have. And we can see that they have all been created into golden records for us. The next option we have, or the next sub tab we have, is the quarantine sub tab. This area holds any records that were actually brought into the MDM platform, but could not be logged as a golden record. And this is that area I was explaining before where the data steward can manually go in there and resolve some of the issues that are arising. And finally, we have our staging area. Uh, there's not much to show right here since we haven't set up any staging areas and we don't have any staging data, but this sub tab would allow you to view the impending changes uh, to the existing golden records from a recent data migration. So we're actually going to go ahead and click on the data sub tab so we can come back here and look over our golden records. One of the more important options we have is the hyperlink timestamp here over in the update date column. And what this is, is uh, much like our reporting tab, we can actually click on this and it will pull in a new window here, which will allow us to look over the different fields that are available to us uh, within that golden record. From here, we actually have four tabs that we can choose from. We have our fields tab. So this is going to show you all of the fields that are included in this golden record and what their associated data is. The sources sub tab is going to show the name of the source that the data came from, when the actual source was established, and the associated entity ID. The tags column is actually going to show if this particular golden record has any tags. We have not set up any tags to this point, so for all of our different fields here, it's going to show as blank. And then finally, we have the history tab here. And this is just going to show you the history of this particular golden record, uh, when it was updated, when it was created, and uh, which sources affected all of those things as well. And then finally, we have our actions button here in the upper left hand side of this window. And this actually gives you the option to manually edit the record. So if you click on this option, you can go in and look at all of the different fields and you can actually manually change uh, any of these. So instead of rows, um, we might have, um, have to rename it Smith, right? And then you would be able to save that. Now it's not recommended that you would go in here and change these manually since it has a lot of things that protect this data uh, to begin with. 
So um, I would only recommend doing this if you are sure that the data needs to be changed uh, to the correct and should only be done under uh, special circumstances. So I'm actually going to leave all of this data alone and click cancel. You also have the option to delete the record in case for some reason you need to manually uh, delete a record from your, your uh, golden record area. So once you're done reviewing all of this information, you can go ahead and go back to your data tab. And then from here, we're actually going to go ahead and click on the quarantine sub tab. Now from our quarantine area, we don't actually have any documents in here yet. So we will be working with some of these a uh, little bit in the future. But for now, uh, what we can do is we can see that we have our delete section here and you can also resubmit. So if you remember, we do have uh, the two main options here that I had noted earlier uh, in one of our slides. So essentially this will allow the, so essentially this will allow the data steward to uh, delete a specific uh, set of documents from here, um, either by a specific source, you can do all or even selected, and they have the same options for the resubmit as well. We're actually going to revisit the quarantine area a little later once we get our Salesforce source all set up and start getting that data in here. So that concludes our exercise number 15 and 16. You can feel free to keep exploring after the video ends, uh, but once you have gone through and you've seen all of the different features that our reporting and stewardship tabs have to offer, feel free to start the next video.